All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's go through a little problem. I'm going to give you the formula, but I think the formula sometimes gets a little bit confusing. So I'm going to kind of work through a problem. I'm going to work through a problem with you, just kind of show you what it is. And then you guys, I think you're going to understand a lot more of the problem just by me working through it, rather than me just saying, hey, here's the formula, this is what you do. So first of all, what exactly is even the vertex? Or what's even a quadratic, right? We're talking about quadratic form, quadratic equations. Well, what is that going to look like? Well, so far, ladies and gentlemen, all our discussion has always been, has been lines, right? We learned how to graph one line. Then we learned how to graph two lines. Then we learned how to find the point, we learned how to shade, whatever, but it's always been with one line or lines, right? So now when we're dealing with quadratics and we're going to get further into this, when dealing with the quadratics, now what we're going to be dealing with is what we call a parabola and that's going to be the shape of a quadratic. Might have been, but I told you that that wasn't something that you guys were going to get covered on, so you don't need to worry about it. Yes. So here's your quadratic, because I said I took that off the exam, so you didn't need to worry about that, because we didn't obviously cover it. So here's your quadratic, right? And so this is going to be the form that this equation is going to produce when we look at a graph. And we'll learn how to graph these in a second, all right? But for right now, all I want you guys to understand is that the vertex is the maximum or minimum point of a parabola. So when I ask, what is the vertex? The vertex is the maximum or minimum point of a parabola. Now, you might look at this graph and you say, all right, I see the vertex, right? The vertex carries this point right there. But is there going to be a minimum for this graph? Well, this graph continually go infinitely to the negative, so there's never going to be a minimum. Yes? Can you explain like, back to the parabola over All the parabola is just the shape of this graph. That's just what, it's, you know, when you call a, what we call a, uh, a line, it's a line, this is what we call a parabola. So if I was going to say, what about a minimum? Well, if I had a parabola that looked like this, this would be the vertex. Would you like to ask a question? Okay. Okay. All I want you to understand from this, right, is that the minimum point or the maximum point is what we call the vertex. So just say, you know, the vertex is the maximum or minimum point of the parabola. Yes. We're going to learn how to find the vertex, which I'm going to show you in a second. I just want you guys to understand when looking at a graph, when you just visually look at a graph, the vertex is the minimum or the maximum point. Okay? So you guys just write vertex, because I'm going to ask you, hey, what's the vertex? And you need to know at least where it is on a graph or what it's going to look like. Okay? So does everybody have written down the vertex, at least showing right there? Because now let's talk about, um, let's go back through and actually find, let's, how are we going to find that? So I showed you guys how to find the axis of symmetry, right? Showed you guys how to do that. What exactly is the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry, if you guys remember, we did a lot of this work in geometry. If I put a dotted line through a parabola, can you, um, is that dotted line, if I have that dotted line going straight through the parabola, is that going to be a line of reflection that you could reflect your parabola? My parabolas aren't the best. But do you guys see how we can actually, that's a line of reflection? Yes? Okay. So this line right here is what we call the axis of symmetry. All right. So that line that cuts a half, so the axis of symmetry is the line that's going to divide your parabola into two equal parts. Can you cut your rugby ball and the same way? Sure. Okay, well, this would be kind of like a parabola all the way wrapped around, but if you guys look at, um, if you guys look at the rugby ball, you guys could see that the rugby ball, until it kind of convexes on top, but on the bottom, it kind of takes a parabola shape. Right? If you were to kind of look at this just two-dimensional, this is a three-dimensional object, but if you were to kind of look at this as a piece of paper, right, without just kind of looking at the bottom half, you can kind of see that the bottom, um, the bottom half of this, right, it, it goes to a lower point, which is called the vertex, right? Now, up this seam line right here, you could say that two-dimensionally that cuts the ball in half, right? 
So you could say that this would be your axis of symmetry because that's the line that cuts the ball in half. Now the important thing that I wanted you to get with, Kendra, about the axis of symmetry, does the axis of symmetry go through your vertex? Yes. Yes. Notice on both axes of, axes of symmetry that I drew, both of them went through the vertex. So when I'm asking you to find the axis of symmetry and stuff, you know that at least the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. Right? So now we're, because we're ta trying to talk about vert vertexes and how to find the vertex. So if I know that the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, let's find the axis of symmetry and see what happens. Because what we notice is I said the vertex is a point, right? That means it has an x and a y coordinate, right? All points. We're still doing with the lines. All has an x and y coordinate. So the axis of symmetry, if you guys notice, axis of symmetry is the x value of your vertex. It's the x value. You notice, how far do I have to go over to get my vertex? Well, I have to go to the axis of symmetry to get on my vertex. Over here, I have to go left where the value of the axis of symmetry to get to my x value of my vertex. So to find the vertex, here's what you guys need to do. You need to first find the axis of symmetry, which is x, which is, sorry, opposite of b divided by 2a. That's the x value of opposite of b divided by 2a. Then to find the y value, which will probably be a little confusing until I explain it, Remember b is up here? b is your coefficient of your linear term. Okay? We'll go through a problem here in a second. Right, but look at, we're not, yes, we are going to be talking a little bit like slope, but notice how this is going to be different. A per quadratic does not produce a line. Okay? It produces this parabola. So your b is not going to be your general slope because the slope of a parabola changes throughout the whole graph. It's not, it's not constant like a line. It the slope changes. So your b is not going to be your slope anymore like it was for a line. Yes? We're trying to figure out the vertex. So what I did is I gave you guys the formula for the vertex, but I want to explain the vertex formula to you. So I'm going to erase one of these, one of these problems, and let's just call axis of symmetry. So let me give you a problem. Let's say I have y equals um, x squared minus 4x plus 8. All right? And let's say I wanted to find um, let's say I wanted to find the, the axis of symmetry for I'm sorry, the vertex. Okay? So the first thing I told you to find that vertex is you first have to find the axis of symmetry. I'll say that one more time. To find the vertex, is Lena, the first thing you have to do is find the axis of symmetry. So how do you find the axis of symmetry? Go back to your previous notes. x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. So what we do is we go to our function and we say, all right, what is b? Well, b is now positive 4 divided by 2 times 1 which equals 2. Does everybody kind of follow me with there? No. What's your question? Do you want to ask a question? Do you understand how I got 4 and 2? Or four, where 4 and 1 came from? OK. So here's my equation, right? By following this format, you can say a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and c equals 8. Does that make sense? Because look at 1 is the coefficient of your x squared, where a is the coefficient of x squared. b is your coefficient of x, which is negative 4. And then c is your constant, which is 8. This is the problem we're working on. I, here's your example. Yes. OK? So here's your example. All right. So the first thing you guys need to do is find the axis of symmetry. Once you've found the axis of symmetry, now, what you're going to do is you're going to plug in your function. So you're going to plug in this value into your graph to find your y values. Let me actually put it to there. So 
Um, remember, guys, we said that this is a coordinate point, x, y point, right? We know there's the x value. We just found out the x value. The x value is 2. So to find the y value, what we need to do is plug in that x value and determine what the y value is. So what you're going to do is you say y equals 4 minus 8 plus 8, which you end up getting is y equals 4. Now this graph does not represent this equation. All right, um, But what you can see is now you have an x value and now you have a y value. So therefore, you're going to take 2, comma, 4. And that's going to be your vertex. Okay? So let's go and have you guys do a problem. And then let's see if we can end class with that.